Hey everyone, Denise Druce here. Welcome to Virtual Cycle. Jump on your bike, I'm gonna get you some music going and we have got a ride in store for you. All right, so we're starting out solo. So just go ahead and pedal your legs easy, matching the beat of this song. All right, let's just see for there we go. <laughs> So if you enjoy writing to the rhythm of the music, you're just starting out about 65. That's matching my cadence. All right, so are you ready for this? This ride is one big, long climb. I've been taking you through each of the stages of the tour of Utah cycling event and today we get to climb Big Cottonwood Canyon. Big Cottonwood Canyon in the East Valley of Salt Lake City, Utah is 5.6 miles. It's 1,700 vertical feet. In real life, this climb takes the riders two hours and 45 minutes. We're going to do it in about 50 minutes and have some time for stretching at the top. So what's really interesting about this stage of the tour of Utah is they use this climb as a time trial. They use this climb as a race against the clock. So literally for two hours and 45 minutes, these guys are racing up 1,725 vertical feet, five miles of canyon. Crazy, right? We don't have to race today. We're just gonna climb. So where you are right now is where you're gonna be. We'll get in and out of the saddle a little bit just to change it up, but get ready for some real riding, some authentic riding. I promise you, your legs are gonna get a workout today. Your heart will be challenged and you will burn calories. We will leave this ride stronger. So we start at a, an altitude of about 7,300 feet. There's a big parking lot called Donut Falls. We're gonna park there. We're gonna jump on our bikes. We are on our way to Brighton Ski Resort. That's our ending point. We'll be going past Solitude Ski Resort. I'll talk to you a little bit about the scenery along the way. This is a really beautiful canyon. It's an average of about a five and a half percent grade. A lot of beautiful rock vistas, spruce trees, it's a high altitude, so you gotta be a strong rider, both strong legs, but also respiratory system needs to be strong for this one. Let's stand up. So it starts out with a relatively easy climb. Obviously, the hill will get harder as we go. So right now, we're still just in those foothills, just starting out. And we're standing just to kind of flush out our legs, kind of get us warm and ready. Go ahead and have a seat. Put your hips on the very back of the saddle. And move around a little bit so that you can feel your sitting bones underneath you. The tailbone pointing backwards. 
And you're gonna lift up so that you feel like you're sitting light in the saddle, not heavy. Use your core to just lift you up a little bit. Let's start to notice our breath coming in through the nose and out through the mouth. Breath is gonna be really important today and every day. Stand up, here we go, just walk it out. Easy walk. This canyon winds a little bit. Every turn offers a new view, a new vista. It's beautiful in a car, but we'll enjoy it even more today on our bikes. I bet if you were creative, you could find a YouTube video that shows driving up or riding up Big Cottonwood Canyon <laughs> while we ride. See if you can pull that up. All right, let's take a look at what's happening with our legs. You wanna be behind the pedals so that every time you pedal, you feel push, not just down, but also forward. We call that push point. Let's stand up. And so whether you're sitting or standing, your hips are behind the pedals, not just straight over. There's always this sense of pushing forward. See if you can feel that here, even though the resistance is still pretty light, pretty easy, just warming up. Good, come back to your saddle, hips on the back of the saddle, that push forward. Take a look down. You want your knees in line over the pedals. So notice the tendency to wanna to squeeze your knees in or push your knees out and see if you can keep that nice connection. Knee over pedal, knee over foot. All right, I think it's time to add some resistance to the wheel. Let's take it up into that moderate intensity. That place where it starts to feel like about a seven. Not too hard, but it's not easy anymore. It's effort. It's comfortable effort. The place where it feels like exercise and you kind of want to stay here for a while, but we will. Moving down to the feet, allow your ankle to flex and point, just reacting to the force from the hips to the pedal. The ankle doesn't try to make any movement, it just reacts, it's loose. Feel the ball of your fit, of both feet on the pedals and lift your toenails into the top of your shoes and just see if you can feel that connection point under your shoe that's pushing forward as well as down. Find your breath in through the nose, out through the mouth, in through the nose, out through the mouth. You want your toes to be loose inside of your shoes. There's no tension. You're not scrunching up your foot in the bottom of your shoe. Toes are relaxed, ankles are relaxed. The work comes from up here. As we push forward, you're not only using quadriceps to straighten the knee, but you're also using glutes and hamstrings to push that leg forward and pull it back. We wanna be aware that it's old school to talk about pulling up with your hamstrings. What we know is cyclists have learned through lots of research that cycling is a push activity. And so we push, 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 we don't pull. The pedal comes up as a result of the opposite pedal pushing. 
So you might notice that each time you turn a circle with the pedal, you get push, relax, push, relax, push, relax. There's a rest built in to every single pedal stroke. Kind of cool. Breathe. Toes relaxed, fingers relaxed. Sitting light in the saddle, zip up your abdominals and sit as tall as you can. Just lift up, lift up through the crown of your head, look proud. Give me a little more resistance. Let's stand up. That should feel like a little more effort than the last time we stood. There's a little more to push. Elbows bounce like shock absorbers. Shoulders stay down, chest stays lifted. Bring it back to the saddle. Are you getting warm? I am. You can tell by my breath, right? We're about 60 RPMs, not much is changing. So the challenge today for you is to stay engaged. Even though there's not a lot of choreography going on, slow your legs, come down to a slower crawl. The slowest will go 50 RPM, so you need more. Resistance on the wheel. So that's your job. Keep turning your pedals, keep the resistance on, and stay engaged. Stay interested in what's happening here in your body with your breath on this imaginary climb. Close your eyes and picture spruce trees, rock views, huge rocky mountains just looming up on either side of you. Above them, blue sky. Slow climb, slow and steady right here. So this is a little bit more like being in the weight room, really working the legs through lunges. And then there's your breath. What do you notice right now? Do you just take a little body scan? What is the most interesting thing happening right now in your body? Bring your intention there. Be the observer. Relax your neck and your face. Maybe even put a little smile behind the lips. Just a pleasant look that tells your whole body, this is good, exercise is good, fitness is good, hard work is good. So your job is to stay engaged and my job is, I think, hard in this ride, which means I have to help you stay engaged. And I don't have all the tools of choreography, of speeding up and slowing down and in and out of the saddle as much. This is endurance riding, meaning it's a lot of the same thing. Well, more like this. <laughs> so my job is to entertain you, to keep you here, to keep you focused and motivated. And so I'm going to give you some internal focus on this hill to help you stay here and to help this have meaning as you put it up against the bigger picture of your life. So I want to ask you a question. And the question is, 
All right, so we're going a faster pace, but I'd like you to try to not adjust the resistance. That was a trick. We're at about 60 RPMs now. That was kind of mean, wasn't it? But you'll get used to it. That's what happens on heels, we adjust. It takes us about a minute at this new place to get accustomed. So give you, be patient. Give yourself a chance to adjust. Don't be so quick to drop that resistance. Ready? Let's give it some body weight. Stand up. Ah, oh, that's better. You can use your weight. The hips are still touching the saddle. There's your breath. Try a little side to side motion, shifting your body weight just slightly over one pedal and then the other. Four, three, two, have a seat. All right, keep it there. Keep breathing. So question, what does the word Nirvana mean to you? In yoga, it's the goal. It's the goal of the yogis to reach nirvana, enlightenment. And really, what it means is freedom, to be free. Stand up. So free from what? Free from the restraints of this being human. And according to yogic teaching, those restraints are mind stuff. Mind chatter. Those are our restraints. Have a seat. So we can recognize that there are physical restraints in life. A pandemic <laughs> might feel like a restraint. Stand up. We might have financial restraints. We might have physical health restraints. There are real restraints. But what yogic tradition says is it's our thoughts about those restraints that cause us suffering not the restraints themselves. Have a seat. So let's just look at that. If I am restrained right now by the fact that I have not been working out and this is really hard, it's hard to breathe, my legs hurt. If I look at that as this sucks, I'm a bad person, I let myself down, I will never be better, that just makes it worse, right? So the restraints are the same, but our thoughts can be different. So the question is, what gets in the way of your freedom? And more specifically, where are you getting in your own way? Where is your mind chatter becoming an obstacle to your nirvana, your joy, your freedom? Shoulders relaxed. Breathe. Standing up. What gets in the way? To answer that question, let's bring to mind a new image. Let's bring to mind the image of a snake that has grown 
uncomfortable in its own skin. Have a seat. So what does a snake do? It starts to shed its skin. There's a knowing probably, some instinct in a snake brain that just knows this is constricting me. This is too tight. I am bigger than this. And so let's just imagine that that might be itchy. That might be like, ugh. like when you're wearing a clothes that are too tight and you cannot wait to get home and get out of them. Loosen up the belts, you know? I can imagine that that snake is like, ugh, I need to get out of this. I need to be free from this. Stand it up. So if you ever get a chance, just pull up a YouTube video and watch. Watch a snake finding its way out of its own skin. It has to wedge itself between two rocks or a branch on a tree until the skin gets stuck there. And then the snake can start to wiggle its way out of what was holding it back. Come down. So let's look at these restraints, these mental restraints, like a skin that has grown too tight. And my soul is too big to live inside this particular skin any longer. So what could that be? How about fear? What if fear is this skin that makes us feel small, constricted, held back because we're afraid? What might that look like right now on this mountain to start to stretch out of that limiting fear? Let's add resistance and stand. So it could mean that, it could mean adding resistance. It could mean pedaling a little faster to challenge yourself in intervals. It could mean something as simple as a shift of perspective. On the other side of fear is freedom down. Go ahead and switch your lead leg because we all have a tendency to press into one leg a little more than the other. Identify right now what is your weaker leg. It's usually your less dominant side and give a little more effort there. All right, my friends, we are halfway there. We are halfway already. Can you believe it? <sighs> Let's stay in that least dominant leg as much as we can. The effort for the second half is harder than the first half. So I want you to just keep resistance on. Add a little if you can. We're at 60 RPMs. I'm gonna list some other limiting patterns for us. And maybe there's gonna be one of these that I say that sticks with you as your truth. That, oh, that's the one. That really, that's my skin. That's my skin that I'm ready to grow out of here. So thoughts, just thoughts in general. Busy mind, always thinking, 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 thinking is limiting. 
this is that need to always be planning ahead, organizing, having conversations before they happen. I'm so guilty of this. That thinking mind. In Buddhism, they refer to it as the not wise mind. We're just thinking, it's just a computer running its numbers. Meanwhile, wise mind, your high mind, your wisdom, your knowing, your truth, can observe all that thinking happening just like little numbers across the ticker tape, inconsequential. Oh, just thinking. And the less we engage with those thoughts, right? The more freedom we experience. So think about what you think about for a moment and see if that could be a skin that you might be ready to shed. A new awareness, a new relationship with your not wise mind, the busy thinking mind. Connect with your breath. Here's another big one. According to the yogis of old, our beliefs our beliefs limit us. When we put our belief in something so strongly that nothing else is a possibility, we limit ourselves. So maybe there are some beliefs running the show that aren't true anymore. There was a time when we all believed the earth was flat. We all bought into that construct. And then science taught us something new. Let's get up and give it a little standing break. We have beliefs related to our politics, our religion, our education, our relationships, even beliefs about ourselves that may very well be temporary because we haven't opened ourselves up to another belief, another possible way of seeing the world. So just reflect on that for a moment. Is there a belief running under the surface that feels like skin that's too tight? and maybe just opening up to the possibility of a new way of believing or being could be like shedding a skin. Stand up. When I had my first son, I believed that that was the happiest I would ever be. I believed that I would never in my life be able to love like that again. That that was the ultimate for me. And then I had two more sons. And my belief now is that we can love more than one person deeply, profoundly, and it doesn't change the amount of love we have for that one person. There's plenty, there's an abundance to go around. That's a new belief I have. Love is not in short supply in my heart.
what gets in the way, what feels like skin that's a little too tight. Right, it. Let's add a little and come on up. 60 RPMs. How about this? Negative self-talk. That is definitely a restriction. The I can't, the I have to, the I should, I shouldn't. If only I, whatever, bring it back down. Oh, I'm so stupid, or I'm always late, or I can't do that. Those are all so untrue. Very possibly put there by someone else. And you have allowed those to be your skin. Well, maybe today is the day you recognize that negative self-talk as getting in your way, getting in the way of your freedom. And it's time to stretch, it's time to expand, it's time to grow beyond those limiting thoughts about self. Breathe deeply. Push those pedals forward. Your toes stay relaxed. Your fingers stay relaxed. All in right now on this beautiful and very steep climb. We're about 60 RPMs. Not a lot has changed, has it? <laughs> so how about pick one? Just pick one of those little negative nuggets of self-talk. And let's outgrow that today. A little trick I use is I gave my inner critic a name. And every time I hear that voice, I just talk to my inner critic and as if it's another person. And I say, that's not true. That is not true. You're lying. Because it really isn't you. Your wise self up here knows the truth and none of that is true. Okay, maybe it is true that you're always late. But maybe that's the belief that you keep living into. And so instead of working so hard to change the habit of being late, change the belief. It's like this, you flip a switch. I am on time. I am an on time person. I arrive on time. New story, new belief, new skin. You can do the same thing with money, with communication, using our voice, with exercise, with waking up. We just choose the positive and we just start calling it our new belief. I am an exerciser is the best motivation, motivational mantra you could take on. If you're trying to add an exercise habit, stop saying I'm trying to add an exercise habit and say, I am an exerciser. I am. Let's see what happens. All right. We are about ready to approach solitude, solitude ski resort. You'll see it on your right hand side. It's a beautiful wide open space. Wonderful place to ski and snowboard. Not quite as crowded as some of the other resorts. Most of the time, a little more affordable. This ad has been brought to you by Tourism of Utah. <laughs> Come on out and ride with us. Let's look at a few more in case I haven't landed on yours just yet. 
how about old patterns or habits? Like, oh, well, I've just always done it this way. Or this is just how I am. Old patterns might be getting in our way. Just because we've always done something a certain way doesn't mean it's the right way or best way or that there's not a new way. All right, we pick up the pace just a little bit, 65. So I'm not a morning person. Could be an example of an old pattern, an old habit, a belief that you could create something new from. I'm a smoker, I'm an alcoholic, I'm lazy. Those fall into that same category of negative self-talk, but also probably born out by truth in your actions, right? Stand up. So what if those old habits are standing in your way of happiness, joy, freedom, nirvana? That's harder to quit something or change something. But we start by recognizing that it's a limiting, restrictive pattern. And we start to view it as that, that it has more pain than pleasure. It might start to feel itchy and cumbersome and restrictive, which are the first few bits of that snake going, I mm, gotta get out of here. I need to lose this. I'm moving on. First steps. Find your breath, steady rhythm. I got a couple more on my list couple more things that might be in your way, might be restricting us. Here's a good one. Our desire and our aversion. Desire and aversion. In yoga text, it's called Raga and Devesha. Desire and aversion. Reach forward, stand up, let's go. So test this out right now in this moment. Is there something you desire that doesn't exist right now? Like right now, I'm really desiring a fan and I didn't turn one on. So my mind is pulled towards something I want that isn't here. Have a seat. And as I give my attention to that, well, I can either get up and get a fan or I can just say, huh, no fan, and not be pulled by that desire that tells me there's always something out here that can make my experience better. Because if I did go out and get a fan, my mind would have another desire. I would want the workout to be done. Or I would want better music on my playlist that's not copyright free. <laughs> I would desire something else. And so when we notice that our mind wants something that isn't or doesn't want something that is, we've identified another obstacle. another layer that we can transcend. How do we do that? Well, it's probably gonna take a lifetime, but I think it's in noticing, just like with our thoughts, noticing, oh, there's a desire. All right, come back here. It's however many degrees today. It's rainy, it's windy. It's like this now. I'm here with what is, 
and I'm here with what isn't. Content, right here, just like this. That is shedding a skin for sure. Stay strong on those pedals. I hope you're sweating. This ride doesn't ever really get breathless anaerobic, it just gets hard. So if it hasn't gotten hard already, we've got about 10 more minutes. We passed Guardsman. We're on our way to Brighton. I want you to give me a little bit more on that wheel. Let's go hard effort for our final 10 minutes. Breathe in through your nose, out through your mouth. So what is Nirvana? It's freedom. It's being free from the restraints of this human life. And not the restraints that environment offers us, but it's the restraints that our mind makes of those. That's what gets in our way of living a life of freedom, of joy, of self-expression, nirvana. So what gets in our way? Let's recap. See if you found yours along the way. Reach forward, stand up. So our thoughts and our thinking mind get in our way. Our beliefs, our beliefs get in our way. Our negative self-talk gets in our way. Our old habits, our old patterns, the way we've always done things can be restrictive. Have a seat. Our desires and our aversions. Wanting what is not and not wanting what is, is a source of misery, suffering. It's a block that gets in the way of our freedom. It's like this now. I'm here with life as it is and as it isn't. And I'm okay. Right here, right now. I'm more than okay and good. In fact, I'm better than good right now in this moment. I feel great. Stand up. Try that on. I'm here with life as it is and life as it isn't. Repeat after me and I'm okay. Have a seat. I'm better than okay, I'm good. Right here, right now, I'm good. In fact, right now, I'm great. Freedom. Find your breath in through your nose out through your mouth. Grab some water. We haven't reminded you too much about that. I hope you've been drinking water. I've been talking a lot. Forgot to drink. All right, friends. Closing in on the top. Closing in on the top. As we approach Brighton Ski Resort, you can see it up ahead. I'd like to ask you to turn a little bit more resistance onto your wheel. Let's make this top of the mountain our hardest work so far. It's gonna to start to feel like a struggle for the legs. We have our breath. We have our strength. And 
we have our new skin. We've let something go. We're a little bit lighter. I'll give you one more image. Hopefully you've caught something in that list that seems a little limiting to you. I want you to picture a snake right now. Come up. And picture pinning itself between two rocks and making that little first poke through the end of its mouth. And there's a tear right there. The first opening. Eyes closed. Picture that snake flexing its muscles and starting to wiggle until its head emerges, listening, brightly colored, that old skin around its neck. Breathe. Have a seat. Keep your eyes closed. Let's stay with that image. Picture you on this bike as you pedal. Every single pedal stroke is another little inch out of that skin. That skin is now down around your shoulders. Your head, your face, your neck have emerged out into the daylight, brand new, free of that old trapping. And there is freedom around your head and your neck and your shoulders. Keep pushing. Add a little bit more resistance and imagine continuing to push as that skin falls down around your wrists. Shake out one hand and just rub it off. Find the other one. And there you go. Arms are now free. The skin starts to fall down around your chest, your waist, and now your chest, your upper back, your torso is free from that old skin. You're glistening. The color of your new skin is vibrant. Imagine that skin now falling down around your hips and down your legs and it stops at about your knees. Your hips are free. And like two old non-elastic stockings, they're just gonna fall down around your ankles. The only sign of your old skin is on your feet. I want you to add a little bit more resistance and I want you to push a little bit harder to free yourself, wiggle yourself out of that last little bit. And then picture that old layer of you on the road as you continue to ride. It served you well, it was a protection and it's no longer needed. Stand up. Stand up, pedal, ride, brand new, brand new. I have a seat, breathe deep, oxygen in through your nose, out through your mouth. We are almost, almost to the top. Got a couple more minutes. And I wanna give you this opportunity to just ride free, unencumbered. Notice your hands, your arms, your shoulders, free, loose, happy, hopeful. Put a smile on your face. Put a smile on your whole body. 
Breathe deep. Breathe to expand in this new skin, fresh. A little more resistance, let's stand. Walk on these pedals like you're dancing. Almost skipping to the top because you feel lighter. You feel more free, hips back. Sweaty, glistening, wide open and free. Have a seat. Ooh. Oh my goodness. We made it to the top of this mountain. I want you to just turn the knob to the left. Keep your legs moving. Pedal easy. Point your toes down to stretch the front of your ankles. And drop your heels a little bit to stretch your calves. Press to sit tall, grab a drink. So I hope you experienced that letting go. And I hope it was meaningful to you in a way that you can use in your life as you move forward with this day. Take your towel and lift your arms overhead, pull back, slow your legs and just feel this expansion. Go beyond a little bit your normal range and just feel you're unrestricted now. You can move, you can breathe. Release, bring it behind and stretch arms back. There might be a little sense of vulnerability, being exposed, being left out in the open without that protective skin. We held on to those beliefs and thoughts and ways of being for a long time because they hid something or protected something. So give yourself time. A snake will stay behind the rock for a while until it feels safe in its new skin. So maybe some journaling, Maybe some meditation, heels drop. Maybe even speak with someone close to you or a professional that can help you navigate this new way of being, this new skin that you've chosen to step into today. On a bike, who would have thought? Hips back on the saddle, let's switch. Start with calves and then shift your hips back, drop to your elbows. You'll find hamstring and calves here. So my, I'll share with you, I'll share mine. Um, my old way of being that has been getting in my way and restricting is this idea that there is us and them the people who wear masks, the people who don't wear masks, the people who are voting blue, the people who are voting red. Um, all of that has been getting in my way of freedom, joy, and expression. Go ahead and come down. And let's take a hip flexor stretch. So you'll stay back here. Bring one foot behind you and just grab that foot. You can move it around a little bit. Open up your chest, kick into your hand. Breathe deep. So the new skin, after shedding that one, the new skin that I am choosing to live in today is that there is only us and us. And difference of opinions don't divide people. The way we judge each other, I guess, for our difference of opinions does. And I'm guilty of that. So there's only us and us. I commit today to giving people the benefit of the doubt and to viewing all of us as us. 
So thanks for joining me today. I hope you enjoy your new skin. It was my pleasure to take you up Big Cottonwood Canyon. I hope you have an amazing day and see you again next time.